Yeah, coincidence. Yeah, coincidence. Yeah, coincidence. Something that happens by chance, I think not. Hello again, and welcome to Buy Wholesale. This channel is about sharing experiences that I have gained through playing the stocks and share game over the last couple of years. Day to day, I'm a quantity surveyor with years of experience of property development behind me. Two years ago, I decided to start doing stocks and shares. And you can see how my journey progressed in June by their featured article by writers in the link in the bio below. Before we start, I just need to remind everyone I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence before buying anything. Stocks can be great winners, but they can also leave you absolutely gaping. I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left. <laughs> Please bear that in mind. Now, without further ado, let's get into today. Top three ETFs. The three ETFs that I have chosen today are about growth. They're in no particular order, but they're ones that I see that the market and the way the world is going these ETFs will do nothing but prosper. I will be doing another video about solid, safe ETFs, ones that are just about beating the banks, but these ones I believe will give us high return yields, and I will go through each one individually with an overview about why I've picked them and where we're gonna go with them, and what do I expect to gain from them. All right, the first one on the list is iShares Global Clean Energy, ticker symbol INRG. This is one of the very, very first ETFs that I ever bought years ago and it's been nothing but great to me. So what is iShares Global Clean Energy? It's an ETF that's an absolute sexy beast and the performances don't lie. On the year, it's 85% up. And you can see in the last previous two years that it is really taken off. And that's because the governments, countries, everybody is moving towards a carbon zero, environmental friendly options to procure energy. Sustainable futures for our children. You're seeing it all over the television, advertising clean energy, solar panels, electricity from wind, with many companies signing up to 2030 to reduce the carbon footprint. As you can see, there is some serious dollar in net assets. The fund manager's BlackRock Asset Management, very reputable, a PE ratio of 33.09, sexy. I look at some of the top 10 holdings, some of them that you won't have heard of, but these are forward thinking companies that are based in the industry that I believe in the next 10 years is only going to prosper. Notable ones are the top listing in Plug Power, for 5.6% of the weight. Orsted, 4.8%. Siemens, First Solar, just to name a few. Another reason to back up my claims is the recent USA election. Biden's plan was to bring forward clean energy incentives. Following his recent victory over Donald Trump, happy days. Clean energy is going to lead the way for America, who have a lot of catching up to do following the tender of Donald Trump, who completely steered the country towards fossil fuels and was a big believer in that the ozone effect didn't really happen. It's thought that Biden's victory will only serve to accelerate the shift, with the president-elect pledging at least $2 trillion in climate-related and infrastructure investments over the next four years. So how can this ETF not drop if there's $2 trillion being pumped in, boys and girls? With the UK target of 2030, Biden has set out 2035, again tying in with the fact that we have lost four years of growth due to Donald Trump. And with 2050 being net zero, imagine that net zero by 2050. If that's achieved, unbelievable for the environment and unbelievable for your portfolio. Rock hard. Now it's science. A bit more detail into the iShares Global Clean Energy charts. The growth really started in this ETF in the 16th of December 2018. So you're talking about two years ago. And if you look at the chart here, you see that it has done nothing but throb. It was making good progress right up until the financial crash. And it's just continued to throb on the back of that. It seems to be that the financial crash has reset everything. Companies are looking at their footprint. Companies are looking at how they can procure differently. The sector as a whole is growing. People see the future and the benefits of going clean. The next ETF that I swore by, surprise, surprise, is gonna come from ARK Investment. In my previous video, I went into an overview of ARK Investment and Big Kathy Woods, hero, legend, all that. The one I wanna focus on today is ARK Disruptive Innovation. The title probably gives it away. It's about disrupting the future. 
things that are game changing. Now the first thing I will say about ARK Invest is they're actually not available to invest in Europe, uh, which is sucks because you know I live in Ireland. So it sucks balls big time, but it doesn't change the fact that you can sign up to their newsletter, get ideas by some of the stocks that they're purchasing. And if I do find few treats, and I have found a few treats, I'm just trying to do as much detailed due diligence and also just check in and seeing how they go, build up a bit of a standing in them before I do YouTube videos about them. Okay, so there's the prices currently. Um, and as you can see over the last six months, it's got really fucking horny. Like, it's pretty much, it's over doubled in value since March, which is just incredible. Like, for an ETF um, to just go up this much, it's it's absolutely phenomenal, really. Like, so the year to date, it's up nearly 84%. Over the actual year, it's up over 115%, which is just phenomenal. And again, this is why this is on the growth list ETFs that I've chosen. Three years, 41, five years, 39, and so on and so forth. It's just really grown. But again, this last couple of years, especially this year, it is absolutely thrilled. Top 10 holdings, well, if you look at the top one, it probably gives an explanation. Tesla, which is over 400% up this year. Is it any wonder with 10% stake that they're absolutely throbbing? And just look at that market value, yummy. So yes, some great ones are Roku, which I also have. Square, which I did have, but I sold my position. Maybe one time I'll get around to talking about why I've done that. Uh, Teladoc, which is another one that I have. And Zillow, recent, recently I've just bought into um, to do with real estate. Again, uh, great stocks. Um, all of them I've heard of. All of them are doing phenomenally well. All of them are something a bit different than the generic stocks that are out there and destructive. For my friends that are actually thinking of investing in the ETF, be wary of this. Uh, Resolute plans to take controlling stake in Kathy Wood's ARC. So they already had a stake. They bought a stake many years ago. Resolute investment manager took a majority holding in ARC in 2016 with an option to buy a controlling stake in 2021. That option has now been exercised. There's going to be new management and the current leader, captain of the ship, is Kathy Woods and she's not too welcoming of this news so that could spell a bit of trouble potentially now obviously they're not going to come in and get rid of her they're very much going to want to keep her but what will she think about it will it change the dynamics will it be business as usual who knows and these are things that you've got to consider when you're buying it but at the end of the day as much as i love kathy she's probably embedded a lot of her core values and the stock and the etf funds will be managed in a similar light it just means mm, Approach with caution, but I was thinking the short term. Um, I think we'll will you'll be safe as houses to be buying it, and maybe until you hear the news or something. But that could potentially spell a bit of a dip in the ETF if she was to perhaps leave. The third one that I would recommend is Vanek Victor's Video Gaming and Esports ticker symbol ESPO. Probably the title gives it away. It's about video gaming, which is obviously a throbbing sector, um, but. The reason in particular that I like this one is because of the esports section of it. Uh, recent times with the lockdowns and sports being cancelled and so on and so forth, uh, we have found esports really taking off. The number of holdings in it is 25 and the net assets is just over 617 million. So it's not the biggest, but the yields, as you will see, is phenomenal. Esports revenue has grown and increased almost 28% yearly since 2015. So that is solid growth. Now it's solid. This year has been exceptional and obviously with people staying at home more, video gaming has prospered and throbbed. When things get better, this ETF will probably suffer as a result, but we still have, in my opinion, six to 12 months of growth potentially still left in this, but guys, you shouldn't be thinking about ETFs and trying to short trade them. They're long-term holds and uh, you know this will be just one that will continue to rise every year, even if there is a bit of a pullback in the short term. But for the next six, 12 months, pff, fill your boots in my opinion. Uh, top 10 holdings, as you can see, Tencent, you know, there's just nice great earnings, massive. We all know the crack of Tencent, it's not gonna get into that. Nvidia, huge, big chip maker, not gonna get into it with them. They are massive and that is a good chunk of their portfolio is in Tencent and Nvidia, nearly 20%, which is massive. Um, I mean, Nintendo speaks for itself, AMD, I mean, that's pretty much, you're probably using a computer right now with AMD software in it. Activision Blizzard, Call of Duty games, huge again. You can nearly do a video on each one of these here, you know, that's the thing, they're so big. The Nintendos, 
uh, throbbing just before the PS5 and Xbox launched. Since the PS5 and Xbox have both launched now, um, sales are doing really well with PlayStation 5 completely leading the way now over the Xbox. Um, but I do think that a lot of people are moving towards the gaming PCs and stuff. So again, the likes of your AMDs, if that's the case, um, and we're maybe going to see down the line that maybe you know the next time it comes around for a PS5 in sort of eight years time or the Xbox perhaps um, they'll be redundant it'll be PC gaming and there's also the new gaming is coming out where it's just simply buying consoles and, and, and doing it over the internet you don't actually need to buy the game so I could definitely see the future of gaming going that way buying like a, I mean you can already buy subscriptions um, to the PlayStation Network but I think it'll become even more that it'll be just with this faster internet just be able to stream quicker You'll be able just to pick up a controller and play a game for a subscription package, and I, that's the way I foresee it. There is thousands of ETFs out there, it really is hard to pick just three. Some notable mentions would be just a simple S&P tracker, but it's a bit boring. I could have also went for the electric cars ETF, but again, people like myself will probably have some EV plays in their portfolio. The likes of Tesla, NEO, um, XPeng, the list goes on really. Um, so that's the reason why I picked video games. I do play video games, but I'm not massively into them. And just to try and pick a certain stock over them, it's difficult where I feel that if you have the ETF, you're getting the best value. Same for the clean energy. I will have some clean energy probably plays in my portfolio because it's such a big industry and the revolutionary technology is just around the corner. I feel that if you have the ETF, at least you're capturing that. Where with video games, yes, you might be able to pick the right stock that will do better than others, but they're all much of a muchness. You might as well have a full ETF that will capture everything there. Well, that's another video wrapped up. I hope you enjoyed and found this video informative. What's your thoughts on the three ETFs that I've picked? Please leave any comments below so I can get some feedback. It'd be greatly appreciated. If you do like this content, please like, please subscribe, help a man out, we can grow this bitch. More content coming your way. And if you are thinking about becoming a stock trader, have a look in the bio, you'll see a link to my broker 212 where you and I will both get a free yeah. trade. Yeah. Yeah, something that happens by chance, I think not.